that it's going down out of raw materials into the work in process copying this account putting it underneath right clicking pasting one two and three and then we're going to post this out so we're going to post this out to the work in process and therefore work in process being the fourth account down on the trial balance it's going to be the fourth account down when we post it to the general journal so we're or the this general ledger <laughs> so i'm over here in s9 s9 equals the 214.5 and enter we're going to take it out of the other asset raw materials which is down here that's in the credit side so i'm in p24 p24 equals the 214.5 once we hit enter this 368 will go down to 153 which is of course represented here as well as is the work in process reflected by the work in process in the general ledger. So let's see what else we got. Next one, we've got the indirect material, 60. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. 8,000 indirect materials. So same kind of idea here, except that we cannot, the reason they're indirect is we can't really apply them to a specific process. So anytime something says indirect, that's like, well, we don't know exactly where to put it, even though it's going to be part of inventory. And that's an indication that it's going to be dumped into the dumping ground of factory overhead, some part of inventory, some piece of inventory that we will have to allocate at a later time. So I'm going to copy factory overhead. It's going to go up. So we're going to paste that down here. It's an asset. It has a debit balance. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which is another debit. And that's going to be factory over. That's going to be indirect materials, which is 68,000. So we're going to credit something. And we're going to do that. We're going to take in this problem. We're going to take it from the same area, meaning raw materials. So we're assuming that the raw materials here includes both of our direct materials and our indirect materials. Some problem will break the two out and two different, you have a raw materials direct, raw materials indirect. We're going to take them both out of the raw materials account in this case. So I'm going to copy this. It's going to go down out of the raw materials, pasting one, two, three. And then we're going to post this out again. So factory overhead is down here, third to last before we get to the uh, orange accounts. So we're looking for factory overhead. So here it is down here. We're debiting it again. So we're in here in S29 uh, equals, and we're going to point to this 68,000 and enter. Then we're looking for the raw materials. Raw materials over here on P25. P25 equals, we're pointing to this 68,000, and that's going to bring the raw materials down right there to the 85.5. Let's see what else we got over here. We got the uh, direct materials used. Direct materials used uh is that what uh, indirect materials uh, direct labor used i'm sorry direct labor used okay so now that's basically going to be payroll here we've got payroll and once again we run into this thing we're probably have in our head that if we're talking about payroll we should be debiting wages expense payroll expense some kind of expense but uh, in this case we are paying payroll just like we always do but we're not paying payroll in order to generate revenue in the same time period we're paying these people in order to generate the asset and so under the matching principle, we can't put it into the uh, expense at this time. It hasn't helped us generate revenue, helped us generate an asset of inventory. Therefore, we're going to put it into some kind of inventory asset. If it's direct, that means we know what process to put it to. And we're going to put it into then the work in, pro the work in process account, the WIP account. So we're going to debit work in process instead of wages expense, pasting one, two, three, here so we got to kind of unlearn that if you just kind of think of wages it's always going to go to wages expense it goes to wages expense because of the fact that it's there to generate revenue in this case that's not the case it's building the assets so that's going to be the 780,000 we're going to credit something 780 I'm going to put a negative of that 780 to represent the credit and uh, in in this case we're going to we're going to put it into some type of payable account just to represent uh, the fact that it is a payable, so if it was a payroll and we paid cash, 
we could credit cash. Obviously, we're not dealing with uh, um, the payroll taxes at this point either. We're just kind of simplifying so that we can see the inventory part of the problem. So we are going to put it into, here it is, factory payroll payable. So we're gonna put it into a payable account and then we're gonna pay it out at a later time, meaning we're gonna pay cash. So this is similar to the, to the payroll entry. We debit payroll expense and we credit cash. You can think of the most simplified payroll entry. In this case, we're debiting not payroll expense, we're debiting the assets of inventory and we're crediting the payable liability, which we will then pay at a later time. So we're gonna copy the liability and put that down here like so. And now we're gonna post this out to the general ledger. So once again, work in process is up here. It's like the fourth account. So here's the work in process on uh, S, uh, S10. And I'm gonna say that S10 equals, and we're gonna point down here to the 780 C24. Enter, and there we have that. Then we have the payable account there. So here's the payable account. It's gonna be the second orange account. So we go to the second orange account here. And we are in the credit side, we're in K29. I'm gonna hold down control and make this a bit smaller so we can see everything like this. And I'm trying to get to that, that uh, this number right there, the credit. So I'm in X29 equals, and we're gonna to point to that 780 right there and enter. And so now we have the 780 in our running balance. We have the 780 on the trial balance. We have the work in process here, matching our work in process there. If we make it full screen so we can see it. There it is there. All right, so next item. Now it looks like we're done here because we're out of blue space, but there are more blue spaces because it goes A, B, C, D, I, and that doesn't work. So we're gonna have to unhide these. So I'm gonna put my cursor on D, hold down the left click, drag over to J, and then right click and unhide. So now we can see these other cells here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hide uh, these cells on this side so that we can work with our problem in as compact a space as possible. So I'm gonna put my cursor on B, hold down the left click and highlight over to E, B to E, let go, right click on the highlighted area and hide. All right, so next item here, we have the indirect labor used. So same thing, we're processing payroll and what we're gonna have in our head, every time we process payroll, someone's probably, you're probably thinking we're gonna debit some kind of payroll expense and credit cash. And that would be similar, except for this case, it's not a, a payroll expense because we're using this indirect labor to help make the asset. So once again, we're not expensing it. Uh, we're gonna put it into the asset of inventory rather than the expense. And we don't know what job to put it in because that's indicated every time you hear indirect, that means we're working on inventory, but uh, we don't know where exactly to put it in terms of what the process. Therefore, we're gonna dump it into the bucket of the factory overhead. So I'm gonna copy factory overhead, gonna put it in F6, right click, paste, one, two, three, 790. It's actually higher than the direct labor, which is kind of unusual. And then we're gonna credit the 790 as well. And uh, what will the credit go to? Same thing we did last time. We're not gonna credit cash in this time. We're gonna make the, the most simplified payroll entry, uh, no payroll taxes or anything. And we're gonna credit the factory payroll payable, a liability, which we will then pay at a later time. So I'm gonna copy the factory payroll payable and paste it one, two, three. That's gonna be the credit, the liabilities going up. So now we have the factory overhead, third to last before the orange accounts in the assets on the trial balance that's going to be the same on the general journal general ledger i should say because that would be the correct thing to say rather than what i did say okay so then we're going to be down here in s30 so once again i'm going to hold down control and scroll down and so we might be able to see them at the same time so i'm down here in s30 we're going to say equals and point to that 790 up top and enter so there we have that posted. I'm gonna make it larger. And then we're posting the payroll payable, which is the first orange account. So if we scroll over here, the general journal, the general ledger, and we look at the orange accounts in X30, I'm gonna say that equals, hold down control. Well, I'm gonna have to do that this way. Hold down control so that we can see it all in one item and we're way down here in x30 and then say equals and i'm pointing to that 790. now you might be saying i could just type these in there and you could but if you do it with journal entries it's so much easier to go back when if there's an error and you know some people off some people make errors and then and that means that you got to go to 
everybody makes errors sometimes. So this will make it a lot easier to see where things lie. If you did not have that, you couldn't use this function like this, or you couldn't double click and see uh, where the things are going, where they're coming from. So formulas better uh, if you can use them. All right, next item. So I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna take these off and we've got uh, 120 overhead rate as percent of direct labor. So now we're gonna use an overhead rate in order to allocate the overhead amounts and we're gonna use 120%. So remember that overhead rate is a predetermined rate that we're gonna use. We're using it based on direct labor because direct labor is generally a good approximation of, of the, the amount of, of work that's in a particular process. And therefore we're gonna use that amount in order to allocate out the stuff that we dumped into this overhead bucket, which we now wanna allocate out to uh, the work in process. So basically we're taking it out of here, we're putting it into work in process. In essence, so we're gonna debit work in process, I'm gonna copy work in process, gonna paste it to one, two, three here, and the amount is going to be for the direct labor, which equaled the direct labor, this 780, thousand times 120 if i move the decimal two places over it's 1.2 so 1.2 and there we have that we're going to credit for the same amount remember that this doesn't have anything to do with the labor in particular we're not paying payroll here we're using labor to uh, know how much to allocate or estimate how much to allocate out okay so we have that and it's going to be going in the working process and out of factory overhead so i'm going to copy factory overhead so that's going to be the credit I'm going to paste it one two three then we're going to go ahead and uh, post this to the general journal general ledger so the fourth account is work in process that's the first one we're going to look for work in process right there it's in s11 so in s11 right there we're going to say that equals point to that 936 and enter work in process goes up to two million three forty nine five then we're gonna credit factory overhead, which is way down here. Two accounts down, so we're gonna go down to factory overhead. Here's our credit. We've been debiting all this stuff in there, including uh, any any raw materials, any indirect, I mean, I'm sorry, any indirect materials, indirect labor, all that stuff we didn't know where to put it to. We put it in there. Now we're gonna say, I'm gonna hold down control and scroll down. Now we're gonna take it out of here. And I'm in cell T31 equals and point to that uh, 936 there and enter and that takes it down to zero and that of course that, that worked very perfectly right there and so it may not always be uh, exact so i'm going to scroll back up 